Hey, to our Collingswood and Oakland school families. This is Dr. Oswald. I'm the superintendent of the Collingswood and Oakland schools. And my goal today is to walk you through some key questions that you may have about our Welcome Back 2020 Return to School Plan. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll have answers to many of the questions that you may have. As a school community, it's important for us to emphasize that the COVID-19 practices discussed in this presentation our practices and our protocols are intended to mitigate but not eliminate the risk of COVID-19. That is an important distinction and one of which our family should be aware. Looking ahead at this presentation, we're gonna answer several of the questions. How will we plan to keep students and staff safe? What services are being provided by the school district? What are your options for sending your child back to school? And depending on what option you select, what will a typical day in the life of a student look like? And then finally, what challenges remain that we have to address uh, prior to the end of the summer. Planning to keep our students and staff safe. Before entering school, we will go through um, kind of a two-stage process. Um, first will be a self-screener at home. It'll be a checklist of symptoms to screen um, all of our students and our staff before they ever leave home in the morning. That will require that we provide that checklist and some education around that checklist, which we plan to do prior to September. And then again, um, really encouraging our students and staff members if they are exhibiting any of the symptoms from the checklist to stay home um, if they're sick or exhibiting any of those symptoms. Finally, as students on the days where they come to school in person, as they arrive, there will be a follow up quick screen at the school, including a temperature check. Once in school, um, the big three precautions really stay. They really remain, haven't changed much over the last uh, five or six months. Social distancing, you'll see in our plan how we will attempt to maintain social distancing throughout the school day. Uh, covering your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze, another layer of protection on that top of that will be wearing masks. So even if you're wearing a mask, uh, if you feel the need to cough or sneeze, uh, please do so into your sleeve. And then finally, opportunities to wash and disinfect hands frequently throughout the school day. Um, if illness arises in school, either students or staff members, um, we will isolate that individual and send them home as quickly as possible, um, either with a member of the family, um, a friend, or anyone else who's approved to take a student home. Um, social distancing. We'll, we will um, do our best to maintain social distancing by having fewer students in our schools throughout the day, and as a result, fewer students in our classrooms. Our desks will be spaced appropriately. That does not mean that we are removing desks necessarily from our classrooms, but we are turning some desks around and creating space in the classroom, um, usable space for students um, that will face the front of the room. Physical barriers have been ordered. Those barriers will go around our student desks. They're clear um, barriers that will provide another layer of protection. And then finally, in our elementary schools, we're going to limit movement in our hallways and common areas. And in our middle school and high school, we will establish one-way hallways and stairwells um, to help better control the flow of traffic and maximize social distancing. Covering your nose, mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze, uh, common sense and common courtesy. Um, but in addition to that, all students and staff members will wear face coverings throughout the school day. Um, both students and staff must wear a mask. A face shield alone is not enough. You're welcome to wear the face shield, um, but everyone will be expected to wear a mask as well. And then finally, providing opportunities to wash or sanitize hands throughout the school day. Our hand sanitizers um, are located in our common areas and in our classrooms. And then a hand washing schedule will be set up at our elementary schools. Changing behaviors, probably one of the trickiest and most challenging aspects of our plan. Um, we're going to limit the use of shared spaces and objects or equipment um, throughout the school day. Limit the number of the students using bathrooms at, at any given time. Uh, reducing the use of water fountains by encouraging students to bring water from home um, or bring in refillable water bottles. We have installed uh, bottle refill fountains and stations in each of our schools. We're going to reduce the need to touch doorknobs, light switches, and other high-touch areas by um, breaking some, some habits. Uh, reduce instances of students bringing items from home. No middle school or high school hallways or gym hallway or gym lockers will be used to start the school year. Um, using hallway lockers in particular requires that students bunch up in small spaces, um, lots of hands on on locks and and the lockers themselves. Um, so we're going to um, have hallway lockers and gym lockers off limits to start the school year. At the elementary schools, we're going to restrict the use of playground equipment, our cafeterias and lunchrooms, and also larger common spaces. We will not be scheduling field trips, at least during the first half of the school year. We won't have assemblies. 
free time recess at the elementary level, which is that recess that surrounds lunch. Um, teachers are free to take their students outside in a controlled environment, but that free time recess will be eliminated to start the school year. Our libraries will be off limits. We will not uh, participate in book fairs or classroom parties to start the school year. Uh, we will encourage our teachers to use outdoor spaces whenever possible, and we will be limiting visitors. So if your child forgets something at home, um, please leave it home. We'll have to do it without, have to do without it that day. Uh, please don't run uh, the items your child forgets up to the school. Uh, they can bring them in the next time they're in. There will be no use of our indoor facilities um, as across the school districts. Um, no use of our indoor facilities by outside groups to start the school year, and that is through at least February 1st. Cleaning our schools, so we have enhanced uh, training protocols for our custodial staff. Um, their jobs, obviously, at this time are more critical than ever. Frequent cleaning of high-touch surfaces throughout the school day, so it's kind of a two-pronged approach. We're going to approach. We're going to do our best to um, to minimize the need to touch those surfaces, and then we will go through and clean those surfaces throughout the day anyway. Um, more frequent cleanings of our bathrooms in our schools. We have upgraded our HVAC uh, system, our air filters in our system, um, to, that should be actually MERV 13 filters, um, changed every 30 days. Uh, fresh air is pulled in to our um, HVAC system throughout the day. Sanitary wipes and spray will be available in our classrooms. Hospital grade cleaners uh, rated for coronavirus are used for our routine cleaning. Um, electrostatic sprayers to enhance disinfecting, they're available in each of our schools now. And Wednesday, our day of remote learning, will be an opportunity for an additional midweek cleaning. The services that we're going to provide, uh, meals will be available one afternoon and one evening weekly. Uh, right now, we're looking at Wednesday for that. Um, mid-afternoon and then in the evenings for families that have different work schedules. A central distribution uh, of our meals, likely at our high school cafeteria as they have been all spring, um, will allow for better selection of food, better variety, and better quality. Students who are eligible for our uh, free and reduced price meals, that's FRPM, may pick up um, meals um, during those times designated above. And uh, if you are a family who believes you're eligible for free and reduced price meals, please apply through our Genesis system. That information went home on July 31st. Child care. Just Kids will provide limited uh, afternoon child care for students who are in school that day from 1.15 to 6 p.m. Just Kids will provide limited full day care for hybrid remote students. So if I'm a hybrid student, but, I, hybrid student, but I'm not in person that day, I'm not in school that day, um, Just Kids will pro provide some child care between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for those students. On the day when the entire two districts will be shut down for remote learning, um, the buildings will be closed on Wednesdays. Just Kids is looking to provide additional full day care, so there should be additional opportunities for those Wednesdays. And then um, Just Kids will provide some morning care in our schools, um, but that care will likely only be provided in the schools that demonstrate the greatest need. We will likely not be able to provide morning care in all of our elementary schools. Communications will come through the district, the school, and the teacher. Uh, we will use email, text message, the website, Facebook, and Twitter, Twitter to get information out there. Um, but depending on the uh, type of communication, and where it makes sense to originate, um, the communication will um, come through both the district, through the schools, school leaders, um, as well as the teachers. Options for your child's schedule. All preschool through 12 students can have basically have two options. You will be a hybrid. You may select a hybrid model. You'll be in school in person two days a week. That's physically in the building. And you'll be remote learning three days a week. The blue team, our hybrid model will be broken into two teams. The blue team, last name A through LE. So if your last name begins with A through LE, you will be in-person hybrid. So you're going to come to, into the school buildings on Monday and Tuesday. You'll be remote on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The gold team will be remote on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll notice both teams are remote on Wednesday. That's our common remote day. And in-person hybrid for the gold team, that's the days you'll come into school, are Thursday and Friday. If you have children in, uh, in the home with different last names, um, one in one end of the alphabet and one in the other, you will be, uh, we will do our best to match up um, the addresses and make sure that those students are in school um, on the same days, which means they're on the same teams. 
Um, if we make a mistake, and we likely will make a couple mistakes, please notify your building principal and they can um, address that and move the students around. Families will be asked um, if they can be flexible with their assigned days. We know we will have some families who just simply can't be flexible. Um, so if you are a family with which has some flexibility in your schedule or there's someone who stays home with the children all day, um, please let us know that via our Genesis survey. Um, and then if you let us know that you are flexible, um, you may be asked as we move through the summer to, um, to switch your days to accommodate another family. We are asking our families don't, not to make requests for changes in teams, changes in days based upon who your child is friends with. Um, we have lots of kids in our schools. Um, there are lots of opportunities to make more friends. So um, we are really trying our best to um, take care of childcare issues first. Um, so we're asking our families not to request, may, not to make requests for changes in, in teams based upon uh, friendships. So the hybrid is when the students are in person in school two days a week and home three days a week. We do have families who are not comfortable sending their children back to the school buildings. They will be remote only students. You also will be assigned to a blue team or a gold team, um, even if you're staying remote. So you're still going to get an assignment, blue or gold, just like the hybrid students. Um, and that is because at some point you may want to come back in. You may want to come back into the buildings and we want to make sure that we have space for you. So um, those students will also be assigned to the blue team or gold team. So don't let that confuse you. Um, and then our remote only students may transition to in-person hybrid. So you may transition over to the hybrid model um, at the change of grading period. So at the, at the high school and middle school, that's marking periods. And at the elementary schools, that is um, trimesters. And then here are the dates. Middle school and high school, if you are a remote only student and you make the choice that you want to come back to school, back into the buildings, um, you can come middle school and high school the first week of the second, third, or fourth marking periods. You'll see the dates of those listed there. We do ask that you notify us. That's about two weeks in advance. Notify us by November 4th, January 13th, or March 31st so that we can plan and expect you back on those dates. Um, elementary schools, same idea. You only have trimesters, so your opportunities to come back to school will be November 30th and March 15th, and we ask for that same about two weeks notice um, by November 18th or March 3rd, depending on when you want to come back into the buildings. A day in the life of a middle school and high school student. So this is an in-person or a remote student. To the greatest extent possible, students will attend school in person or remote during the designated times. Um, if it is not possible for whatever reason that your student cannot attend during the times that we'll look at in a second, uh, we're going to ask you to contact the teacher and make some other arrangements. Um, but we're going to shoot to have all of our students attend school, whether in person or remotely at the same time. The teachers will begin with a pre-recorded mini lesson. So whether you are sitting in front of me or you're sitting at home, you're going to um, watch a pre-recorded mini lesson and then there will be an, uh, an activity or an assignment that follows that mini lesson related to the lesson and the teacher will be available to help students in front of them sitting in classroom as well as students who are remote, students who are learning from home. Um, and the teacher will design a model that allows that to happen. Um, in the event of science labs or other activities that require some in-person experiences, the schedule may shift a little bit so that what's going on at home may not be identical to what's going on in school, um, because obviously there are some science labs that you can participate in in school that may not be so easy to participate in at home. So those types of shift really will be dependent on the teacher, um, and that's where our students are really going to have to pay attention to what their schedule is and what the expectations are. Um, our teachers will do their best to replicate those experiences for the remote students, the remote only students as well, since those students will not be coming back into the building, um, but those students will not have the opportunity to do the live in-person um, demonstrations or activities um, that the teacher is uh, planning for, the, for inside the classroom. Um, additional support will be available remotely on Wednesdays between 1025 and 1230 p.m. Um, so those are times on Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, our teachers will be um, planning for the following week. They will also be um, going through some professional development um, to try to maximize our ability to deliver this hybrid model. So 1025 to 1230 for about two hours on Wednesdays, our teachers will be available at the middle school and high school level um, to provide additional support um, and uh, additional practice for our students. This is what a day in the life of a middle school or high school student will look like. Um, 
So if you are on the blue team, this is what your Monday will look like on, in that middle column. If you're on the gold team, this is what your Thursday will look like. You'll go through your periods A, B, C, and D. Each period is about an hour, is an hour long. Dismissal is 1230 to 1245. We are allowing a window not only for dismissal but also up above for entry. Um, that will allow us to get students in and out of the building safely um, and reinforce social distancing. 1230, the end of the um, in-person in school day to 115 will be what we call an equity period and that will be to support some of our students who need some additional help. Um, so that's what the day in the life of a middle school or high school student looks like. Then we look at the day in the life of a preschool and elementary school student, and this is a little bit more complicated. Our preschool and elementary students need additional support and guidance throughout their school day. Kindergartners are not going to be as independent as high school students, so we need to be able to um, plan for that. All of our preschool and elementary students will meet with their assigned classroom teacher, the teacher you were assigned at the beginning of the year, assigned classroom teacher each morning for morning check-in um, or morning meeting. So no matter whether you are hybrid in person, hybrid remote, or fully remote, during that period in the morning, you will meet with your classroom teacher. Students who are remote, um, students, I'm sorry, students who are in person will meet with their classroom teachers live during the school day. So after the morning meeting, the people who, the students who are sitting in class will meet obviously with their classroom teachers live. Students who are remote, either kind of remote, fully remote or hybrid remote, We'll meet with the remote learning teachers throughout the school day as, according to an established schedule. And that schedule will be um, based upon the teachers the need, and the needs of the students. So um, that schedule may be different for different groups of students, but you will receive a schedule when you are to meet with your remote learning teachers. Remote, hybrid, and all remote students will meet with their classroom teachers for afternoon meetings as well. So our remote students will meet with their classroom teacher in the morning just as school starts and at the end of the day, just as school ends, and you'll see the times in a second. Um, additional support on Wednesdays is available from 9 to 10.30. That is a change from the plan that was released on July 31st, um, where those times mirrored the high school times. They actually, the, at the elementary and preschool level, additional support will be available on Wednesdays from 9 a.m. till 10.30 p.m., and we'll begin with a morning meeting and check-in time. So that's a time when students should log in. Um, so they will get to see their teachers on Wednesdays as well. Continuing that, um, a day in the life of a preschool or elementary student, full class meeting time will be available Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all five days. That will be for social and academic reasons. Um, so that is when all students assigned to, say, a third grade class at Mark Newby School or a fifth grade class at the Oakland School will see their, um, their teachers in the morning. Each day, many lessons will be provided. And then small group time will be provided to both in-person and remote students. The most effective use of time at the preschool and elementary level to increase student learning is small group time. It is not watching a teacher teach a full group synchronously. Um, the teacher will provide recorded mini lessons, just like the mini lessons they would provide if students were sitting in class. Um, then they will actually use their time to maximize learning by checking in with small groups of students. Independent practice time with intermittent check-ins will be built in to the school day. Um, each student will have access to classroom and remote learning teachers. And then each student will have the opportunity to check back in with the classroom teachers during the afternoon meeting. So um, students will have the opportunity to check in with the teacher in the morning for the morning meeting, and then we will institute an afternoon meeting so they can end up end their day with their classroom teacher as well. Um, it is important that we dismiss the idea of a traditional roles of teachers. Um, so if you are at a specific school and know who the fourth grade teacher is because of some medical conditions, uh, pre-existing conditions, you may find that you don't, uh, that that teacher may not be assigned into that role this year. Um, this is a, an interesting year and we are doing our best, um, absolutely doing our best to um, meet the needs of all of our staff and all of our students. A day in the life of an elementary school. So if you are a hybrid student, a, high, a student who comes to school a couple days a week, the days that you're in school, and you'll see them listed above, the blue team Monday, Tuesday, the gold team Thursday, Friday, you will show up between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning in a designated window. You will have 9 to 9.30, a warm-up and a morning meeting with everybody from your class, those who are in the classroom and those who are at home. 
between 9.30 and 1, you are going to do reading, writing, word study, and math. And then 1 to 1.15, there's a dismissal window. If you are in school on a designated day, you will work with the classroom teacher. If you are a hybrid student, a student who comes to school some days, two days a week, but it is one of those days when you're not in school. So for the blue team, Thursday, Friday, for the gold team, Monday, Tuesday, you'll start your day 9 to 9.30 with a warm-up and a morning meeting with your classroom teacher. That's with everybody, whether they're in school or not. At 9.30, you'll have a science or social studies mini lesson. Science and social studies are the areas we believe students can learn a bit more independently. You have a science and social studies mini lesson. Um, and then there'll be an activity that follows up on that mini lesson, which is pretty much going to be independent. Um, imagine math or follow up on the previous work. So your remote learning teacher here, once you've met with your classroom teacher, your remote learning teacher will take over at 930 and will set up your day for the rest of the day. Um, you may do some imagine math work or you may do a mini lesson, a follow up on a mini lesson. At 1130, you'll check in with your remote learning teacher again. Um, check in, see how you're doing. They will provide some content follow-up and set forth the rest of your day, provide some structure for the rest of your day. And then at two, uh, between 11.45 and 1.15, there will be that content follow-up, um, and that will be independent. Between 2.30 and 3 p.m., you'll have the opportunity once again to meet with your classroom teacher, although you'll be remote, you'll meet with your classroom teacher as you'd started your day. That's how you'll end your day. If you are a student who chooses to stay home, full remote, you never come into our buildings. So when your team, remember everybody's being assigned a team, when your team is in person, so this would be if you're on the blue team, this would be Monday and Tuesday, um, you'll start your day with morning meeting every single day. You will then have mini lessons and activities in reading, writing, word study, and math, just like would be the case if you were in school. You will then do some small group and follow up with the um, remote learning teachers. That small group and follow up with remote learning teachers will happen at scheduled times between 945 and 1130 and then between 1145 and 115. Um, finally, you too will have the opportunity to meet with your class um, afternoons my, after, for the afternoon meeting between 230 and 3 o'clock. Preschool students, 8.45, your day's going to start a little bit later to allow families time to get their students to preschool, their children to preschool. 8.45 to 9.15 will be the entry. This is if you are in person. So if you're a student who chose the hybrid model, the days you're in person, um, you'll enter between 9.45, 8.45 and 9.15. 9.15 to 9.45 will be your check-in and question of the day. 9.45 to 1.15, we will follow creative curriculum during in the school. With the classroom teacher, we'll examine interest areas, gross motor skills, SEL, small group, and independent activities. Those will all be included in the student's day. 115 to 130 will be our dismissal window. So these are the for students who are hybrid on the days they're in person. They're in the school buildings. What if you're hybrid and you're it's a day that you're remote? 915 to 945, just like the last group, you're going to check in with your classroom teacher. You're just going to do it remotely. 9.45 to 1.15, there will be some guided and independent activities and goals from creative curriculum. Those will be led by the remote learning teachers. These are our teachers. The remote learning teachers will lead our um, some practice, but some of that's going to be independent. There will be some small group activity in here, and when I'm working with one small group, another group may be working independently. Between 2.30 and 3 p.m., your second chance of the day for your afternoon meeting with your classroom teacher. So this is the teacher you would traditionally be assigned if everybody was coming back to school. This is the remote learning teacher, which will be a new teacher for you, uh, but this is one of our teachers. And then for our day in the life of a preschool student who decides to stay fully remote, again, on the days when your team is in person, so if you're on the gold team, this would be Thursday and Friday, you're going to do creative curriculum. You'll do the morning meeting like everybody else. This is the same for everyone with the classroom teacher. Then you're going to work through some of the creative curriculum goals, um, which uh, relate to your interest areas, your gross motor skills, social emotional learning. There will be some small group and some independent activities. And then you'll have the opportunity to, again between 2.30 and 3 o'clock to meet with your classroom teacher, albeit remotely. On the days when your team is staying home, similar schedule, 
the activities will be different. These activities in the middle of the day will be conducted and um, organized and scheduled by the remote learning teacher. Wednesdays, preschool and elementary students, additional check-in and support time will be between 9 and 10.30. So 9 to 10.30 on Wednesdays, everyone will start their Wednesday at elementary and preschool with a morning meeting or a question of the day. Uh, Wednesdays will focus on independent work. Wednesdays may include activities for our special areas, art, music, um, technology. Uh, Wednesdays may also include activities for social emotional learning. And one of the goals of our Wednesdays is to take a break from screen time, uh, minimize that screen time, and provide you with activities that get you away from the computer. Outstanding questions, things that we need to do, and challenges that lie ahead. Uh, we are working now on an attendance policy. What counts as having you be in school today? Obviously, if you're a student who's scheduled to be in the building, that's pretty easy. Um, but what happens if you're a student who's scheduled to be remote, or you're a full remote student? Um, what do we count as attendance? And then assessment and grading, um, those are two areas that we're gonna tackle before the school year begins. Our challenges, staffing. Um, right now we have some staff members who have indicated that they're unable to return um, for the start of the school year. They will work remotely, but they're unable to return in, per in person um, because of some medical issues or pre-existing conditions, and those are challenges we're tackling uh, right now. And then transportation remains a, a challenge. We don't transport a lot of students in Collingswood or Oakland, um, but uh, transportation and the availability of buses um, is a whole other challenge um, that we are working with right now. Uh, questions about this plan and how it will impact your family or your child um, or what it will look like in your school building really should be directed at this point to your building principal. Um, so while everyone will be following this general plan, your building principal would be the best point of contact for you. Building principal or school administrator will be the best point of contact for you uh, moving forward when you have specific questions about the plan. If everyone emails me, I will not be able to respond to everyone. So it is much a much better course of action to email your building administrators. And at that point, if there's a question they can't answer, they, can't answer, they can reach out to me and we'll work through an answer for your question. Um, but please, uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, but please reach out to your building administrator um, or your building principal. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, hopefully this presentation um, answered some of your questions and kind of outlined for you what the day in the life um, of, a, of a child in the Collingswood or Oakland Public Schools will look like, depending on whether they are hybrid in person, hybrid remote, or fully remote. Thank you and stay safe.